in this video, we're going to show you how to make this lovey. It's just intended just for children to snuggle with. It's just darling. You can download the pattern. It comes with all different kinds of animals that are just adorable. In this video, we're going to show you a few extra tricks to help you succeed and have a visual, which is always a great thing to do when you're thinking of a project. But we could recommend this pattern to you. It is just darling. We love it. Now I've printed off the pattern. You don't have to. You can just read it right on your uh, computer monitor. It's got great pictures, great explanation. I'm going to do, show you a, a couple extra techniques that will make this even easier. And having a visual really helps. It's made by um, Juju, which is an online embroid machine embroidery company. So you can go today and download this pattern. I'll leave the link down below this video. Not very expensive at all and super easy and it's a, it's a nice pattern. Now, it comes in two sizes. Two sizes of bears, two sizes of blankets. One blanket is 12 by 12, one's 14 by 14. Now, because of the width of my fabric, I could easily do 18 by 18 and I decided I'm not going to waste that fabric. I'm going to make the larger blanket, which doesn't matter. You just use the same instruction for the corner bear, right? The blanket size doesn't matter. So I cut two pieces, two squares, 18 by 18. I'm going to show you a different technique here. I have a really cute fleece on one side and a minky on the other side. And I use this press and seal, which is just at the grocery store. It's a cellophane that has one side sticky, not too sticky, just the right amount of sticky. It's great for a lot of sewing techniques. So I put them, the fabric right sides together. I cut like seven inch strips of the press and seal, and then I just fold it right over. So I don't have a million pens, and it holds the uh, fuzz out of my sewing machine, and it's easier to sew on, just glides. Now for the larger bear, the pattern says to hold back stitching two and a half inches from a corner, from the two sides of one corner. So I pinned that so I would remember that. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and just sew. I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam. The pattern says half inch. But because of this technique and using this uh, press and seal, I can easily do a quarter of an inch and keep it accurate and have the feed dogs feed that furry, stretchy fabric uh, through really easily. I'll show you how to make the ears and the feet. I've put interfacing in my hoop. It could be a tearaway, it could be water soluble. You just don't want to leave in interfacing because this is going to be a stretchy, soft, there and you don't want interfacing left in there. Now the first stage is just stitches out the location of the ears and the feet onto your interfacing. Next I'm going to place uh, a sandwich for the feet and for the ears. I've just put uh, two pieces of fabric together, right sides together. Now you want so that when you're petting these feet going this way, the, the nap is going to go the same way. So the nap's going this way. So I want this fabric to go down the feet. It's kind of important. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing with this where the nap is going that way. So I want it going down the feet, a sandwich. Then the ears, I want the same thing when the nap is being petted it will go towards the tip of the ear. And I've sandwiched a pink and a brown for the ears. So the inside of the ear will be a different color. Make sure I've got that nap going the right way. Now, you could spray adhesive that down, or I can again use my press and seal and just put it all the way over and it sticks, it holds it down cool. You don't have all that fuzz, um, fur flying everywhere. Much easier to stitch on. And the next step will stitch out the outline of the ears and the feet. Then I take it out of the hoop 
trim it so it's a quarter of an inch turn it right side out and lightly stuff it and those are done now for the head i've hooped my large hoop again and remember it's not a leave-in interfacing the first stage stitch the location of the head and then I put down one layer of my minky right side up and then it's stitched again so it has another outline then I put some of my press and seal down to do the eyes press and seal is really good for any kind of furry fabric or a terry cloth it will hold it down so you can get your stitches done then I'll probably take rip this out. It rips really easily. Just comes right out because it's been perforated. Just take it out. Then I'll put um, my snout fabric um, on top, right side away. Stitch a single stitch again, and trim around the outside of that snout fabric and then satin stitch. Okay, we finished the snout. It's satin stitched. And the next thing will be a machine embroidered nose. Because this is such a dark color, I'm going to use a pom-pom to be stitched on there just to give it a little more contrast and pop a little bit. So I'm not going to machine embroider the nose. Um, there's a stage that shows you where to stitch the um, ears and secure them and so those are you know the the inside of the ear goes towards the face and stitch those on now i've got another piece i'm going to make sure the nap is going the right way and i'm going to put that over this face and i actually could put my press and seal here because it'll it'll just tear out and that will help hold the ears down then I'm going to put another layer on top I'm going to do another press and seal and then it will stitch around and my little face will be ready to turn to trim and turn right side out now the head is complete I did slip the back of the snout one layer and stuff it a little bit more and then whip stitch that slit closed. The pattern shows a, a contrasting fabric for the snout and that works really good too. I just used the same fabric so that little bit of stuffing kind of helped it pop. And then again, there's my, um, instead of a machine embroidered nose, I just used a little pom pom. And you can trim them down to be exactly the size you want. So that's done. Then the blanket was turned and I it's much easier to do a quarter inch top stitch just to get both of the sides of the uh, presser foot on that fabric and then some of the plastic was hard to get out of the seam but you know what I kind of left it in there it didn't matter it just works fine so then across this open edge I basted in the two feet and it's best if the feet come right to the edge of the blanket. They separate a little bit better. Next, I'm going to place the head down across this area. And I'm just going to sew the front of the face, just the front. Leave this back kind of pulled back so you can just sew that front. And then this corner is going to tuck in. And you just roll that top over and just blind stitch the back a little bit. I'll show you that finished. Okay, the little bear is finished. Turned out so cute. Uh, the pattern suggested that you stuff it lightly. And that really works well, especially for the feet. If you put the stuffing down towards the end of the feet, then it makes it more floppy. You actually wouldn't have to stuff the, stuff the head. Um, you could put the head, attach the head, you know, just the front seam, and they have you leave this open and turn it under to hand stitch. Well, you could stuff it at that point. Be a whole lot easier to sew before you stuff it. And then I just whip stitched. When the fabric is kind of furry like this, it doesn't show the quality. I just mostly wanted it to be secure. 
so it's just a whip stitch and he turns out cute on Etsy these are about $25 I calculate $3 to make it when the fabric was 40% uh, off so no that makes a great neat gift that's uh, personalized because you made it and I hope this video showed you some fun tricks to make it easier and more successful and appreciate you watching.